Peace, everybody. Welcome back to Mass Adoption. I am your host, the Crypto Chemist. And as always, it is my job to remove all of the complexities, mysticism, all of the confusion behind blockchain technology, cryptocurrency, DeFi, NFTs, you name it. All right. So let's get right into it. Oh, that's real good. All right, so, man, I really had to come online for this and discuss it because I have been imploring people for a, a long time now to do as much as they can to avoid um, having to interact with Ethereum. Now, obviously, that's a hard feat in this day and age if you're in the NFT or DeFi space because the EVM is pretty much the underbelly Right, the Ethereum virtual machine is pretty much the underbelly of the DeFi um, slash NFT movement that is happening globally right now. And so what we have come to, to find is that Ethereum is not as DeFi as we previously expected. Uh, a lot of us who are deep into the technology kind of already knew, but there was no way to really show and prove it without people just you know saying like oh well it's it's you know it's the granddaddy as we call it so whatever we'll deal with it right but new information is showing that it's a lot more diabolical than we think and we need to really start rethinking the way that we interact with ethereum or if we decide to interact with it at all in fact a lot of what people were claiming about xrp and ripple or slash ripple ripple labs whatever it seems to be the same if not worst with ethereum because one thing i can say about ripple and xrp is they already pretty much told you hey we're for the banks this is what we're going to be doing this is how we're going to be doing it you can get on or you know get down or get on you know what i mean but with ethereum they have kind of tried to position themselves as this for the people type of technology that is more eco-friendly and it gives us more power right using ethereum and especially i'm especially disappointed in metamask and I, even i can acknowledge and admit that i had no idea about metamask so let's get right into what i'm talking about because you're probably like what what do you mean i have a metamask right now on my phone or on my computer browser or my chrome browser what are you talking about let's get right into it so crypto slate just released this article um on the 4th of march uh and it's entitled ethereum blasted as trojan horse for tyranny following metamask scandal so metamask uh as it implies is complicit in this situation and let me tell you why so metamask shoots itself in the foot by blocking certain jurisdictions a dig deeper reveals the ethereum ecosystem is in bed with jp morgan none other come on than jp morgan if you don't know the history of JP Morgan, you should definitely look that up. Uh, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to get any triggers on YouTube, so I'm not going to tell you the history. But what I will say is you need to look it up. This company is not benevolent at all. <laughs> um, and they couldn't be to become the behemoth in the financial and the, the centralized financial industry that they have been. That's all I'm going to say. So the article who is uh, that is written, by the way, by Samuel Wan of Crypto Slate. Starts by saying MetaMask users in Iran and Venezuela reported problems with completing transactions yesterday. It later emerged that affected users were deliberately blocked for legal compliance reasons, right? Now check this out. This is possible because MetaMask uses an API or gateway service through Infura, I-N-F-U-R-A. Like MetaMask, Infura is also owned by Ethereum developers Consensus, following its acquisition in October of 2019. Infura is a Web3 backend and infrastructure as a service or IaaS provider <laughs> that offers a range of services and tools for blockchain developers. This includes the Infura API or application programming interface suite. As expected, the community response wasn't pretty and it shouldn't be. It shouldn't be. The whole purpose of us being here is because we don't want to be played anymore. 
And so it just shows and proves that even when we think we can trust someone or something, they're still trying to find a way to maintain their, their hold. Not, not that we didn't expect it. We expected it, you know, to come from different directions. So it's not anything that we're, we're confused or surprised about. But we're, we're striving our hardest to avoid this tyranny, this, you know, this, this one world order, this whatever you want to call it. I don't want to call it a one world order because that may offend someone somewhere. But this centralization in one entity or one group having power over everyone else. We're striving to avoid that. And this is what's being done uh, with our trust when we strive to avoid it, right? So our response wasn't pretty. Um, and with deceit over decentralization being a common theme. So we were like, yo, this is supposed to be decentralized. Why are you striving to deceive us, right? And considering what's happening in Russia, Ukraine, some realize that you and I could be next. So that's our, that's our biggest issue. We could be next. Um, it's a big issue in any s instance when you are prohibiting people um, from accessing the blockchain in any way, any dApps, anything like that, dApps particularly, we, we would expect this from a Binance, obviously. We would expect this from, you know, a Coinbase, obviously. But MetaMask, a dApp? All right, so it says, the brutal truth about MetaMask censorship. The Block's VP of Research, Larry Cermak, said that if MetaMask is prepared to block Venezuelan IP addresses, it won't be long before they block individual IP addresses. As a result, Cermak suggested users move to alternative wallet providers, and I am inclined to agree with Larry Cermak. We need to be, we need to be protesting MetaMask protesting pro protesting metamask um just off the sheer disrespect alone we need to be protesting them in my opinion all right if metamask slash infura is open and willing to block countries like venezuela by ip addresses it's only a matter of time until they are forced by regulators to censor individual people's ip addresses we need alternatives immediately hoping that alchemy and others don't do this all right so basically what he's saying is you guys told us that we were in, in a completely decentralized application that we were using to conduct our transactions. Uh, we're using these, these, these liquidity pools. We're using these other interfaces to interact with our MetaMask wallets, all the while thinking that this is a decentralized transaction when it is not. When it is not. It is completely centralized, and it is owned by the people who, like, the, the, do you see the irony? And this, this app is owned by the very people or at least they have interest in it, the very people who we are striving to protect our rights against. That is so disrespectful, like on so many levels. And the reason why they hit it is because they knew if they came out and said, hey, we're a decentralized app uh, with interest owned by JP Morgan, everyone would be like, yo, what are you, like, come on. <laughs> so um, reading on, but the latest data on MetaMask users shows that there are 21 million monthly active users making it the most popular wallet on the market. Hmm. I wonder why. I wonder why they worked so hard to become the most popular wallet on, on the market. As soon as there was a little buzz behind NFTs and, you know, before we even got into the metaverse space or the metaverse started popping off really hard as it did at the end of last year, 2020 or excuse me, 2021, uh, before that, you already seen MetaMask extensions everywhere. Hey, guys, get your MetaMask extension. You're going to need it to interact. You had companies that had different wallets that were less popular telling their clients, hey, we got to switch to MetaMask because it's the one. And now all of those people, all of those people in their IP addresses, if they're not using VPNs, are now at risk, right? And if they are using VPNs, it better not be set to Venezuela or Iran, I'll tell you that right now, <laughs> okay? As such, right, this, this wallet being the most popular, as such, making the jump to a viable alternative could prove tricky. So we're all going to have to come together as a community and look for a viable alternative, back them, even if it's with like some sort of project, 
right? We, we have to use our same collective power that we have been using for these NFT projects and these metaverses to come behind a different wallet who the people have control over. The people must have control over this alternative method, okay? So the Magic Internet Money podcast host, Brad Mills, called Ethereum a Trojan horse of tyranny. Mills pointed out that big corporations, including JP Morgan, are behind consensus. He added that only Bitcoin is government resistant, okay? Only Bitcoin is government resistant. So this is a tweet from Brad Mills um, where he said on March 3rd, just the day before this article, Ethereum is a Trojan horse for tyranny. Consensus owns Infura and MetaMask. JP Morgan, UBS, MasterCard own Consensus. 99% of EVM transactions go through Consensus. DeFi is captured by venture capitalist, for, uh, venture capitalist firms and banks. Only hashtag Bitcoin is government resistant. Ethereum is not even insider resistant. And so he shows uh, these different links to, um, well, excuse me, these different pictures, right? So at MetaMask, do not tell me that you became centralized. I have this problem and many people in Venezuela have the same. This is L-A-R-V or at Golu uh, IS1 underscore, all right? That's what, what, what this person said. Another person said, um, what the hell is the error in my MetaMask? from this afternoon and how is it fixed in ETH, okay? So it's basically telling you that <laughs> your country isn't allowed to use MetaMask, okay? Another tweet um, from MetaMask in response to this said issue, and it says, MetaMask is a client-side wallet that strives to make the blockchain maximally accessible to everyone. Yeah, that's why JP Morgan <laughs> owns a piece of all right, whatever. Okay, um, Infura had a misconfiguration this morning, but it has been corrected now. Infura said, in response to the concerns we have been hearing, we want everyone to know that we corrected the problem that so many of you have pointed out. In changing some configurations as a result of the new sanctions directives from the United States and other jurisdictions, we mistakenly configured the settings more broadly than they needed to be. This was our oversight. And we are grateful that it was pointed out to us. Once we have uh, determined what happened, excuse me, once we determined what happened, we were able to fix the problem and service has been restored. We sincerely apologize for the interruptions to those inadvertently impacted regions. This is crazy, right? Because they kind of tell on themselves. The first thing that they say is, in the, in the first tweet, it says, in changing some configurations as a result of the new sanctions direct directives from the United States and other jurisdictions. Read that again. In changing some configurations as a result of the new sanctions directives from the United States and other jurisdictions. So we know what's going on with Ukraine and, um, and Russia. It's kind of hard to miss. And we know that there are sanctions being put on them. But remember, this is supposed to be decentralized finance. And you all know how these countries are using cryptocurrency to try and fight these sanctions. So, I don't know, maybe I don't understand foreign policy that well. <laughs> uh, and, and, and please feel free to comment and correct me, but why would a decentralized company like MetaMask, if not controlled by centralized influences or centralized interests, why would they be adhering to the sanctions directives from the United States and other jurisdictions, NATO, maybe. But why would they be doing that? That's crazy to me, right? So let's read on. He says, however, this doesn't explain the MetaMask support notice describing the service outage due to legal compliance reasons. Well, I think it does, right? The legal compliance reasons are the sanctions directives from the United States and, quote, other jurisdictions, but... I mean, I, I don't know if they're, if they're shooting themselves in the foot, if they're putting their foot in their mouths. I don't know what they're doing with their foot, but it doesn't look good, all right? So it says, he has a screenshot here, and it says, why MetaMask and Infura cannot serve certain areas, okay? Remember, sanctions directives from the United States, and then legal compliance, right? Reasons for the outage. 
And on this picture, updated, uh, this just says an hour ago, I don't know when the actual picture was taken. MetaMask and Infura are unavailable in certain jurisdictions due to legal compliance. When you attempt to use MetaMask in one of these regions, you'll receive this error message. MetaMask is unable to connect to the blockchain host. Review possible reasons here. This is this is uh this is concerning. <laughs> I'm not even gonna hold you, man. This is concerning, and I'll tell you why. So, what's the deal with J.P. Morgan? Despite J.P. Morgan's CEO Jamie D Dimon calling Bitcoin worthless just five months ago, don't they all say that? And then they're all you find out they're holding extraordinary amounts of Bitcoin, but that's cool. Uh, five months ago, Dimon said that Bitcoin was worthless, but that hasn't stopped J.P. Morgan from holding all of this crypto. For example, in creating its own payment token called the JPM coin. So Bitcoin's worthless, but the JPM coin is somehow backed by what? When people can't even get $10,000 or more out of the bank without waiting a couple of days and without going through some sort of process to do so. What is JPM coin worth exactly? I'll wait. Okay. This coin hasn't even had an update in a while, according to um, the author of this article, as well as its plans to become the first lender in the metaverse. So JP Morgan says that the first cryptocurrency ever to be invented is worthless, but they want to be the first lender in the metaverse, which is based on, if I'm not mistaken, blockchain technology and cryptocurrency. Hmm. Let me do my face again. Hmm. All right. So covering all bases, the New York headquartered mega bank has also gone down the route of partnering with established crypto firms. For example, consensus, consensus bought the JP Morgan built quorum in August 2020 for an undisclosed fee. And April 2021 was saw a consortium, including JP Morgan Invest. Wait for it. Sixty five million dollars into consensus. But the relationship between consensus and JP Morgan is deeper than that. A group of 35 consensus shareholders has demanded a special audit of the 2020 deal, which JP, which saw JP Morgan acquire a stake in MetaMask and Infura. So why are these stakeholders or shareholders asking for a special audit? What does that mean? Why? Right. But it's alleged that consensus board, the consensus board has breached its fiduciary duties by approving the deal at the detriment of minority shareholders. Also another huge surprise that never seems to ever, ever happen. And as a result, the group is seeking to void the agreement. Good. Good. I hope you guys get what you tried to do to other people. I hope you get that tenfold. All right. So fundamental intellectual property and subsidiaries were illegally transferred from CAG and a new entity, Consensus Software Incorporated, CSI. With J.B. Morgan deeply embedded in the Ethereum ecosystem, is it time to admit ETH isn't run for our benefit? That is the question that we are left with by Samuel Wan. That is the question that we are left with by Samuel Wan, and that is why I propose an alternative to Ethereum. My alternative to Ethereum, Ethereum or one of my alternatives, because I, I have a few. My first one that I'm going to offer is, even though it's built on top of the Ethereum blockchain, <laughs> and that's what this video was supposed to be, um, was supposed to be about, but we're going to have to find a way to get it off of there, right? Switch over somehow, but my suggestion was actually Matic because it is a lot cheaper, a lot quicker, um, a lot more versatile. It seems an increase in usage as Ethereum gas fees have gotten out of control. And maybe that's a reason why now that I think about it, that's a huge, huge reason why Ethereum gas fees are so out of control because look who's getting paid off of them. Look who's potentially, I don't, potentially getting paid off of them. All right, but that's another conversation for another day. So since we can't go with Matic at this moment in time, my alternative would be Soul, and let me tell you why. 
So Solana matches up well with Ethereum, especially according to Justin Pope of The Motley Fool, who wrote this article on why Solana is giving Ethereum a run for its money. So in two critical areas for development, uh, development speed and low transaction cost, Solana is really giving Ethereum a run for its money. It says here in the article that Ethereum's structure limits transactions per second to 15 to 30 on its network, creating the bottleneck that results in these high gas fees. On the other hand, Solana can handle far more as many as 50,000 per second, and its fees are just 0.00025 cents, all right? A fraction of a penny is how much it costs. The difference between Ethereum and Solana in this regard is similar to a single lane road with bumper to bumper traffic versus an empty expressway that doesn't charge any fees to access. Therefore, it shouldn't be surprising that Solana is gaining traction with developers and now has more than 400 projects in its ecosystem. And I'm assuming, um, I'm estimating, I should say, that a lot more are coming. This is still just a fraction of what Ethereum is doing, but Solana's momentum is noteworthy and could continue drawing developers to the network. So big ups to NFT artist, music artist, and influencer Tommy Trillfigure dot SOL on Twitter, right? He speaks a lot about the non-decentralization packaged as decentralization that occurs with Ethereum. And he has long abandoned the idea of Ethereum as anything viable for decentralized finance. He has been on the Soul blockchain creating projects, working with Soul developers, and pretty much pushing the Soul blockchain as his idea of freedom and decentralization. One thing that I do love about Tommy Trillfigure uh, is that he doesn't really down anyone who uses any other blockchains he just really shows and proves by his own behavior why he feels like soul is the way so big ups to tommy trail figure please check out his new project that is coming out i will have more links to it in the description and i will show you more of the project at the end so i just want you all to be very cautious of what's going on right now there is a lot a lot going on that you should be aware of especially if you are a newbie in this space i do not want you getting caught up with all of this crap that's going on around the world with hackers all of that i strive to help to avoid or help you to avoid all of the bs get right to it remove the mysticism and let you know that you can do it why because as i always say you are divine and it is your time that is not just something that i say that rhymes if you are here if you've watched this video all the way through then i know that this message is meant for you that also rhymed but i didn't mean to do that that's just how i know that what i'm saying is true all right so if you have any information that you'd like to share with the show or you'd like to get out there, um, get analyzed, whatever it is that you want, please put it in the comment section. Like, share, subscribe, keep interacting with us and we'll keep interacting with you. Big ups to everyone who has supported the channel. Please continue to support the channel. We're gonna have a lot of great stuff coming your way very soon. We're just working on multiple projects all at once. So please forgive the lack of inconsistency or the lack of consistency um, because that is what we've been up against, all right? So see you all next time. Peace. <laughs>